I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 12 Save us, Lord, for the merciful have disappeared, the faithful have vanished from among mankind. Everyone speaks falsehood to his neighbor, their flattering lips speak double talk. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, may he cut off every tongue that speaks boastfully, which says, with our tongues we will establish our power, we say what we please. Who is Lord over us? Because of the destruction of the oppressed, because of the groaning of the poor, now I will rise up, says the Lord. I will keep him safe from the one who puffs against him. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. You, Lord, will keep them safe you will protect them from such people forever. The wicked strut around when depravity is honored by the children of Adam. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Genesis chapters 16 and 17. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore no children for him. She had a servant girl, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please go to my servant girl. It may be that I can build up a family through her. Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. After Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took her servant girl, Hagar the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. He went to Hagar, and she conceived. When she saw that she had conceived, she looked down on her mistress. Sarai said to Abram, This wrong that I am suffering is on account of you. I gave my servant girl into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked down on me. May the Lord judge between me and you. But Abram said to Sarai, Look, your servant girl is in your hands. Do to her whatever seems good to you. Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her presence. The angel of the Lord found Hagar beside a flowing spring in the wilderness, beside the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, servant girl of Sarai, where did you come from? Where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her authority. Hagar gave birth to a son for Abram. Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael for him. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, 
and I will make your descendants very numerous. Abram fell on his face. God spoke with him. He said, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. Your name will not be Abram anymore, but your name will be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a large group of nations. I will make you extremely fruitful, and I will produce nations from you. Kings will come out of you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you, as an everlasting covenant throughout their generations. I will be your God, and the God of your descendants after you. I will give the land where you are living as an alien, all the land of Canaan to you and to your descendants after you, as a permanent possession. I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep, a covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised by cutting the foreskin off your flesh. It will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Every boy among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised, every male throughout your generations, whether he is born in your house or purchased with money from any foreigner who is not descended from you. Every male who is born in your house or one who is purchased with your money must be circumcised. My covenant will be marked on your flesh as an everlasting covenant. The uncircumcised male who is not circumcised by removing the foreskin from his flesh, that person must be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai anymore, but her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and even give you a son by her. Yes, I will bless her, and she will be a mother of nations kings of many peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will the child be born to someone who is one hundred years old? Will Sarah, who is ninety years old, give birth? And Abraham said to God, Oh, let Ishmael live in your presence. But God said, No, Sarah, your wife, will bear a son for you. You shall name him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Yes, I have blessed him. I will make him fruitful and will multiply him very greatly. He will become the father of twelve chiefs, and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear for you at this set time next year. When he finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. Jesus left there and went to his hometown. His disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did this man learn these things? What is this wisdom that has been given to this man? How is it that miracles such as these are performed by his hands? Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joses, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his own relatives and in his own house. He could not do any miracles there except to lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went around the villages teaching. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. He gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their money belts. 
They were to put on sandals, but not to wear two coats. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that area. Any place that will not receive you or listen to you, as you leave there, shake off the dust that is under your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They also drove out many demons. They anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The Word of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Spare us, Lord, from the lies of the devil and the attacks of our conscience. Comfort and save us in your patient compassion. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Guide us, Lord, to the wisdom of your word and the power of your promises. Take away our confusion and doubt. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, when we come to you in prayer. Make us confident to take you at your word and to follow you in faith. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Empower us, Lord, to walk in your ways and live in your truth. Fill us with your love that we may love you and one another. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, you conquered sin, and by his resurrection you restored our innocence and gave us everlasting life. Fill our hearts with steadfast faith that we may daily serve you in your kingdom and praise and thank you always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.